ओम नम शिव स्टूडेंट्स कंटिन्यूइंग विद द चैप्टर क्वाड्रिलेट्रल्स आवर नेक्स्ट एप्लीकेशन फ्रॉम द एक्सरसाइज 8.2 पॉइंट टू इज गिवेन एज ए बी सी डी इज अ ट्रेपेजियम इन हुईच ए बी पैरल टू डी सी बी डी इज द डायगनल एंड ई इज द मिड पॉइंट ऑफ ए डी सो हियर ए बी सी डी इज अ ट्रेपेजियम वेर ए बी पैरल टू डी सी बी डी इज वन ऑफ इट इज डायगनल and e is the midpoint of ad now a line through e through this point e a parallel line is drawn with the ab so e uh, a line through e parallel to ab intersecting bc so the point through the point e a parallel line is drawn with the ab which is intersecting at a point of f on bc show that f is the midpoint of bc we have to prove that f is the midpoint of bc so in the given first we will mention what are the parallel lines given that ab parallel to dc and e is the midpoint of ad and ef this ef line is drawn in such way that it will be parallel with ab ef parallel to ab it will be now here we have seen that e is the midpoint of ad and ef is parallel with ab so we can apply the converse of the midpoint theorem that considering the triangle abd in the triangle abd e is the midpoint of ad and eg parallel with ab as ef parallel with ab so eg also part of the ef so eg also will be parallel with ab that's why e is midpoint and eg parallel with ab so we know that means g also will be the midpoint of bd so g is the midpoint of bd the reason is the converse rule of the midpoint theorem that since the line drawn through the midpoint of one side of a triangle parallel to another side bisects the third side the converse theorem says that a line drawn through the midpoint of one side parallel to the second side will bisect the third side so e e here midpoint eg parallel to ab so g must be the midpoint of bd so that means we have got g as the midpoint of bd now for the triangle abd we have considered the converse midpoint theorem similarly for the triangle bcd for this triangle bcd we also can apply the converse uh, of theorem of the midpoint theorem that g is the midpoint now considering the triangle bcd g is the midpoint so g is the midpoint of bd and gf parallel to ab parallel to cd so g is this part gf is parallel to ab and ab is parallel to cd because in the beginning it is mentioned that ab parallel to dc so gf parallel to ab because ef parallel to ab so gf is the one of the part so gf parallel to ab and this is parallel to cd that means gf parallel to cd these two line are parallel g is midpoint then also similarly f must be the midpoint of bc because of the same thing that since the line drawn through the midpoint of one side of a triangle parallel to another side bisects the third side that is the converse theorem of the midpoint theorem so here e is the midpoint eg parallel to ab so g is the midpoint now for the triangle bcd g is midpoint and gf parallel to cd so f must be the midpoint so the next is in parallelogram abcd e and f are the midpoints of the sides ab and cd respectively so abcd is a parallelogram where e and f are two midpoints of ab and cd show that that if f and ec trisect the diagonal bd so ae if we af if we join and ce if we join so the diagonal will be trisected by this two line so the af and ec trisect diagonal bc trisect means it will divide into three equal parts bisect means it will divide into two equal parts trisect means three equal parts so in the given abcd is a parallelogram it is given and also it is given e and f are midpoint of the sides ab and cd respectively so 
here if we draw the figure because figure may not be given by reading the question we have to draw the figure in this way that a b c d is a parallelogram e is the midpoint of a b f is the midpoint of c d so the diagonal is b d so if we join a f and e c so you will see that this will trisect that is we have to prove so in the given we mentioned the things so here we are seeing that a b this a b and c d are parallel why they are parallel because it is in the beginning it is said that a b c d is a parallelogram as a b c d is a parallelogram so opposite sides are parallel so a b parallel to c d so if a b parallel to c d so we can say a e parallel to f c that is why a b parallel to c d that implies a e parallel to f c so these two part will be also parallel because they are the part of the same parallelogram and also a e because e is midpoint so it is divided into equal part so a e will be half of a b so a e equals to half of a b and we know opposite sides in a parallelogram are equal so a b and c d are equal so a b can be replaced by c d so half of a b will replaced by c d that is half of c d instead of a b because we know parallel sides opposite sides are parallel in a parallelogram so half of cd and half of cd will be the as f is the midpoint so half of will be cf or fc as f is midpoint so half of the cd will be fc that means ae equals to fc so here we have seen ae parallel to fc here we have seen ae equals to fc and we know if the opposite pair of sides are parallel and equal so that will be a parallelogram so a e c f a e c f this one a e c f this will be the parallel because a e equals to f c and a e parallel to f c opposite sides are equal and parallel so as they are parallelogram a e c f so a f and e c they will be also parallel so a f parallel to e c a f this side a f and e c this side these two sides will be also parallel because opposite sides are parallel in a parallelogram now considering the triangle a b p a b p this triangle a b p here if we see a b p triangle here e is the midpoint of a b and just now we have proved that e q parallel to a p because a f parallel to e c so e q is the one of the part and ap also one of the part of this line so eq parallel to ap so here we have seen this one that in the triangle abp in this triangle e is the midpoint of ab and eq parallel to ap since af parallel to ec so if e is midpoint and these two line are parallel that means q is the midpoint of bp so therefore q is the midpoint of bp because of the same thing same reason since the line drawn through the midpoint of one side so if a line is drawn through the midpoint which is parallel to the second side so the other third side will be bisected so another side bisect the third side so it will bisect the third side so e is midpoint and eq parallel to ap that means q is the midpoint of bp so therefore q is the midpoint of bp reason is written inside so as it is midpoint so these two part will be equal in length so bq equals to qp that is given as number 1 now we have done for this triangle abp now same thing we can apply for the qcd this triangle qcd so in triangle qcd for this triangle what are the things we can write same thing f is the midpoint of cd because in the given we have written f is the midpoint of cd so f is midpoint of cd and pf parallel to qc so p pf that's one will be pf so pf parallel to qc so f is the midpoint of cd and pf parallel to qc because pf is part of the af and qc also part of the ec as they are parallel so pf parallel to qc so f is midpoint and pf parallel to qc so that means p is the midpoint of qd so that means these and these also will become equal so therefore p is the midpoint of dq p is the 
midpoint of dq because of the same reason that converse of the midpoint theorem if f is midpoint and pf parallel to qc so p must be the midpoint so p is the midpoint of dq that means qp equals to pd these two part will be equal that is number 2 now considering the number 1 and number 2 from 1 and 2 what we can say that bq equals to qp and here qp equals to pd so bq equals to qp equals to pd these are the three part are equal so from the figure it is easily shown that it is divided into three equal parts that means af and ec af and ec trisect the diagonal bd so this is the two applications we have seen for the converse of the midpoint theorem so in the next video we will see few more applications till then namaskar